Hi, this is David Hillier here and I'm going to give you my final video on the factor models and the arbitrage pricing theory. Uh, so this finishes off my chapter 11 of the textbook and in this video I will be comparing CAPM, the capital asset pricing model, with the factor models that you get in the arbitrage pricing theory and I will also take you through a worked example of how you would use the arbitrage pricing theory and then finally I will show you using real data um, how effective the arbitrage pricing theory is and also some problems with that. So uh, without further ado let's talk about CAPM and the arbitrage pricing theory. Now although we arrive at the exact same expression uh, if we're using the market as a factor model, there are differences in the way in which we get that expression. Uh, there's ways in, in terms of how we derive it and also in terms of how we use it. So if we start off with how we, we derive that expression, the expression that uh, we're talking about is the, the market model. It's the, the one factor market model and that's where you have the return on a security on the left hand side and on the right hand side you have the risk free rate plus the beta times the excess return on the market. So that is the, the exact same expression as CAPM and uh, but we have a different approach to it. Now let's talk about CAPM first. With CAPM you start off with portfolio theory uh, we start off with two risky assets, uh, we bring in the risk-free asset with the risky asset, uh, we then derive um, the expression for portfolios and then we go on to derive the expression, the CAPM formula for individual securities. So theoretically it's very robust and it's also very intuitive and so when you, you get to that final expression you know that you've taken quite a long journey to get there. Uh, so CAPM is a theoretical model. The arbitrage pricing theory on the other hand is a statistical model. We we arrived at the, um, the, the CAPM type expression uh, by creating that linear relationship between excess returns and uh, beta and then we spoke about how underpricing and overpricing will be exploited by uh, traders, by investors and so that in equilibrium the pricing uh, would be such that you would get a straight line or a linear relationship between the returns and, and beta. Now that was a one factor model but with APT you have the flexibility that you can extend the number of factors to as many as you want and we have the, the four factor model uh, which is a common one where we have uh, the market portfolio as a factor, we have high minus uh, low which is to do with the book to market equity, we have small minus big which is to do with the market size and we have the winners minus the losers or the, the momentum effect uh, which is to do with the, the, the Carhartt uh, model. So you can add all of those but you don't need to even restrict yourself to those, you can talk about an oil factor, you can talk about a gold factor, uh, you can talk about any type of factor really. Now as you increase the number of factors then the model captures more and more of the variation in the returns of the security. So that means that you have uh, less unsystematic risk because the the, the risk of the returns has been explained by all those factors and the less unsystematic risk that that's something that, that's quite good. So you would say that the APT would be arguably more realistic because instead of just having one factor with KPM, APT you can have many factors including the market factor which K, uh, the CAPM has. So I'm going to take you through a, a quick example in arbitrage pricing theory. We This comes from the book and uh, we're using a company called British Land Company and let's assume that we have four factors, right, okay. Um, those four factors 
I'm not. I don't care what those fa four factors are. Let's just assume that there there are four factors, and the exposure of British Land Company to each of those factors is given by the beta, the gamma, the delta, and the mu. And you can see here that the beta uh, of British Land Company with respect to the first factor is one point one. The the exposure or the sensitivity of British uh, Land Company to um, the second factor is 2, That's the, so the coefficient is 2. You have delta equal to 3, which relates to that factor, and you have mu equal to 0 0.1, which relates to this factor. So what's the expected monthly return then on uh, British Land Company? So what we do is we just use this this formula. This is a formula that you've got. We've got the the innovations in each of the factors, so that's the difference between the what we actual and the expected. You've got the coefficient here uh, for each of those, and it's a case of just multiplying them out. Now you could actually say, like, let's assume that the first factor is the market factor, so ignore the the final three factors. So that would just be like, in a sense, it would just be a market model, um, a one factor. Uh, APT and it's the, the market model so that would be the difference between the market return and the, the risk free rate uh, and you know and you calculate the returns as as you would have there um, so that would give you the excess return monthly return for British Land Company as 1.778% so quite a simple uh, approach now what I'm going to do now is to show you how you would actually do this in practice and I'm thinking of um, using uh, Apple uh, as an example. Now, Apple's a, a difficult one because if you look at Apple over the, the longer term, um, you'll see that uh, if we, we load this up, um, you'll, you'll see that the Apple has just had absolutely enormous growth in its share price uh, since about 2000. And uh, you can see here that it's just... It shot right up, right into 2005. So the market uh, is um, return hasn't actually done that for uh, Apple. Now, what we're, but we're going to use that because I think it's a good example of how you know uh, having a very large company, but it might not give you uh, good as good results as you would maybe expect. Now, where would you get these factors? Now, the place that uh, many people go to is to Ken French's website. And with Ken French's website, you have um, uh, we, we've got this this here. We click on data library, and then from data library, you can go to international research returns. And because it's Apple, I'm just going to go for the global factors. Now everything is in um, U.S. dollars, so it's important if you're using this data that you convert all the prices into U.S. dollars. Uh, you'll see that the way in which the factors are calculated, you have a small minus big, and it's the equally weighted average of returns. Let me just make this bigger. Equally weighted average of returns on the three small stock portfolios uh, minus the average returns on the three big. High minus low is book to market portfolios, and it's the equally weighted average on the two highest against the two lowest. Uh, and um, you've got the winners minus the losers, which is the the equally weighted average of the two winner portfolios minus the two loser portfolios. Okay, so what we're going to do is we would, um, let me just click back on this. Uh, I would click this data and you'll see that um, the data here uh, starts in 1990. These are monthly returns, but if you you go right all the way down to the bottom, you can get annual returns. And it's the annual returns that we're going to be working with. So we've uh, got the annual factor returns. We need to get the uh, the, the prices and the, the annual returns for Apple. So I would go to click on the uh, Apple and I would move to historical prices here. Uh, if you click on historical prices, now we're using annual uh, all you can get is just monthly uh, but I'm going to just take the full uh, set of data and then I would import these into um, I would import these into Excel 
import them into Excel, get rid of all the months, and then you're only really just working with the uh, annual figures. So look at the these are the prices, uh, the adjusted prices for Apple, and you can see that in 1991 it was one dollar seventy seven, and now it's sixty nine. Uh, sorry, it's actually one hundred and sixteen dollars um, and seventy, and that is for the second of January two thousand and fifteen. Now we're wanting to get the annual return for Apple, and so the annual return for Apple uh, for the year nineteen ninety one is uh, equal to, and I'll just write this in. It's equal to uh, two. 0.08 because that's the the first value uh, of 1992 divided by the first value of 1991 minus one and you'll see that it's 17.5 percent and uh, what I've done here is I've just multiplied that by a hundred so that we have consistent uh, values for each of these but they're absolutely crazy some of these figures as you can see um, the you know and that, that that's what you've got with Apple. Now I've got a Mac, so with a Mac uh, it's a bit of a pain uh, because Microsoft doesn't include regression module in uh, in the Mac, uh, the Mac Excel. You can get an, a third party, but I'm going to use a different uh, software product called Stata. Now before I move on to Stata, what I've done is I've, I've used the RI minus RF, so that's like the excess return for Apple. And to get that, I basically subtracted the risk-free rate from the Apple return to get this. So 17.51 minus 5.96 5.6 is equal to 11.91. So we're now going to move on to Stata. And uh, with Stata, I've imported all the variables here. So you'll see that uh, I've got the, the each of the factors. I've got the risk-free rate. I've got the Apple return. I've got the excess Apple return. And then I've just got some other variables that I don't know how they, they get in there. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to regress the Apple return on the excess market return. So that's a bit like a, an almost like a CAPM type um regression so if we do that uh, and so you'll notice I've regressed the Apple return on the, the excess market uh, return and the thing we're looking at is the coefficients that's the beta here now because Apple has done so well uh, your constant is is absolutely massive because it's just performed so well on average Apple performs so well uh, you're going to have a very high constant but we've got a significant beta for Apple and what we're doing here is we're regressing the Apple return against the global uh, factors not the the US uh, S&P 500 or Dow Jones but the global market return uh, and we've got uh, a very high uh, beta coefficient. Now that's a uh, CAPM uh, but it's not really a CAPM because with CAPM we actually constrain the the intercept to be the risk-free rate. And you can see here that we're not doing that here. We're, we're actually letting the, the intercept to vary. So it's not exactly like the CAPM. So it's a bit like a, a factor model, uh, an APT one factor model. If I looked at the uh, excess returns and regressed the excess returns on Apple against the, the market, so that is a, a one factor model, you'll see that um, very similar uh, results there because the risk-free rate doesn't really vary uh, year to year and so you're getting the same level of um, exposure for Apple returns to the market. Now the next stage is to then add in the additional factor, uh, the risk factors and that is uh, you know we add in the small minus big, the high minus low and the, the momentum factor which is the winner minus the losers. Now what we're doing is we're adding in the risk factors and uh, we are in a sense we've got now four variables uh, rather than just one variable and uh, that means that the in a sense of if what what we're seeing here statistically is that a much more precise type of model uh, than the previous one factor model and when you you run this regression you'll see that 
there's no st statistical significance. So once we've, we've run this regression, the statistical significance of the, the beta has actually dropped. And it's gone down to 1.11, uh, but it's not, not significant. However, you could argue that, well, this is a much better model because you've got these other factors in there. And, uh, you know, there's different ways. This, this, is, this is the reason why I chose Apple, because it, it actually the power of the statistical model drops quite significantly when you add the, or the power of the, the beta coefficient, the statistical significance of the beta coefficient drops quite significantly when you add the other variables. And the reason for that is that when you've only got one factor, that factor is actually capturing a lot of omitted variables. And uh, there's maybe a, a relationships between the, the this excess market return and these other variables here. So once you bring these other variables in, you're then starting to strip away the impact on uh, from omitted variables. You look at with the the factor model, we're getting a beta of 1.11 uh, with these four factors. With only a one factor model, you've got a beta of 1.82. So let's look at what how that compares to how Yahoo Finance measures the beta of Apple. Because 1.82 is significantly higher than 1.11. So we're going to go back to Yahoo Finance. We'll click on the summary. And you'll see that the Yahoo Finance beta is 1.06. So our APT uh, beta, our arbitrage pricing theory beta, is much closer in magnitude to the beta that has been reported in Yahoo Finance. Uh, and so that can give you some type of insight into how you know these commercial websites come at the beta. Notice, however, that it's not statistically significant using the annual data. Uh, also, we don't know how um, you know the, how much time uh, the Yahoo Finance is, is measured the, the beta over. We have started in 1991, going all the way up to 2015. We're using annual data. Uh, you know, you could use monthly data. You could use a shorter period uh, there's so many things that you can do with this type of analysis. And so hopefully, um, in, in that very quick um, approach, I've shown you how you can go about collecting the data, running the regression, and uh, looking at the coefficients themselves. Um, it might maybe be worthwhile going through that, because I did do it very quickly. So looking again at this and doing it uh, a bit slower, Unfortunately, I don't have um, a PC version of Excel, and so it meant I had to move to Stata. But if you wanted to do it all in Excel, then I would advise you to use the Data Analysis Tool Pack. And there is a module in there that uh, allows you to do a regression in Excel. But unfortunately, because I have a Mac, I haven't been able to do that. Okay, so... Thank you very much and the next videos will be in chapter 12 which focuses more on more corporate finance stuff and the cost of capital. Thank you.